We are continuing with Luke chapter 1 from verse 46 and it's titled Mary's Song in my NIV translation. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Now there's there's a lot of stuff in there and we could probably yeah just go through it quite deeply. I'm just going to pick up a few things that kind of jumped out to me. The first one is just this this level of rejoicing that Mary has. She's connected with her cousin. They've got this shared understanding that they're each carrying a child that is very important and very significant to the world. And there's been an angelic encounter kind of in the birth story of their child or the pregnancy story of their child. So so they share this very special bond. And this is is Mary's song, <coughs> excuse me, of, of response to that. And it's very interesting that she says God has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Because, like, if you call yourself humble, are you in fact humble? <laughs> That's interesting. But I think what is interesting, what jumped out is me, because she gets to um, humble later again. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. And if we're looking for something from this passage that we can apply to the church, then the word humility is a very interesting one. Because in a lot of churches, the leader, or sometimes the leaders, lift themselves up above the congregation. And my feelings on, on this are, of very much that that's that's not how Jesus did things and so should we as earthly leaders be doing the same and so anytime you've got a leader that is not displaying humility if there's a distance between you and the leader of your church or the leader of your denomination if you can't get close to them then that feels like the antithesis of what it was like with Jesus Jesus was always inviting people close to him the children that were pushed to the side women that were secondary people that were sick that weren't allowed to be touched Jesus was always calling them close and Jesus the son of God was was always there was never a sense of air or grace or look how good I am or look how removed I am he could have been the most removed person and yet he made himself available. And so anytime I see a church leader that, that refuses to connect with people or only connects with certain people, that makes me very suspicious. There was an incident a couple of years ago, actually, with the Justice Conference, where I wrote a piece on how amazing and incredible it was that some of the pastors had been on the team that volunteered to clean toilets. And I found out late, later after that, secretly, from a meeting that someone I know went to, that, that a pastor took issue with that and had big issues with my blog. Never approached me directly, as Jesus might have told him to do, but apparently found it disgraceful that I was suggesting that pastors should clean toilets. However, I think in Mary's song, she's kind of preempting who Jesus is going to be. And firstly, she's giving recognition to God for kind of lifting up the humble, bringing down rulers from their thrones. And so... This is just a challenge to you. If you look at the pastor in your church, is he a humble person that would be raised up by God? Or is he a ruler on a throne that God might bring down? Because if you if you had a church and the pastor is putting distance between himself and you, then that is warning signs. Anytime a Christian leader makes themselves too important, too holy, too righteous to be touched, you're... So stop sounding like Jesus and stop sounding like who Mary is, is singing about here. The other thing she says is mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. One thing we are reminded about God constantly throughout the Bible is that he's a generational God. He doesn't just care about this generation, but from generation to generation. And I think that can be a reminder for us that as people, 
we often live in the moment. I think as, as people in the world today, maybe over the last 10, 20 years, we've started to realize that we've lived a little bit too much in the moment when it comes to pollution, when it comes to killing off animal species, when it comes to meat eating, things like that. We've done things that 20 years, 50 years, 100 years down the line are destroying our planet. And again, that goes back to early, the beginning of Genesis, where God creates mankind and he says, look after the planet. Govern the planet. Don't destroy the planet for your own benefit. And so even there's like a reminder in this in this message of, of generation to generation that, that God has this bigger focus picture. And so maybe a call to us to think about our actions, our money, um, the way the way we choose to live, the people we choose to live with, w when it's going to relate to our children, when it's going to relate to our children's children and the communities around us, the systems and structures around us. So many things in there, but, but just the encouragement to live generation to generation. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. So pride doesn't even need to be a thing on the outside. There are a lot of us, I think, who inwardly are proud. And we think we are great, a big deal or a great deal or doing important things. And, and God scatters them as well. So be careful. Like stand in front of a mirror. And I need to stand in front of a mirror and say, where am I proud? Probably not, am I proud? Because I know it's in there. Where am I proud? Where are things where I need to be seeking God for humility? I need to be asking God for humility. And I need to be choosing to be hum humble. I, th I don't think humbles and humility is necessarily a gift you're given. I think it's choices that you make. How you choose to act. How you choose to speak. How you choose to treat other people. And so we can ask for it if it's lacking in our life. But we also need to be working towards it. Verse 53, he has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. Just a reminder, and we're gonna, I'm sure we're going to get into this a lot as we look at Jesus. He has filled the hung, hungry with good things. That, that the story of the Gospels is one of justice, one of looking out for the poor and the needy and the neglected and those that are pushed to the side. Anyone that says that is a byproduct, anyone that says that is an extension of the gospel or that is an extra or an add-on is missing the point that from the very beginning, before Jesus even enters, his mom is saying, God has filled the hungry with good things. God cares about the poor, just as my son is going to. And... Yeah, like I say, there's a lot more in there, but I think those are, are some of the things, some direct things we can take from that song, but also just some of the things we can infer given the greater story of the Bible, that, that Mary has shown humility. And so the fact that she mentions it, she, I think she's just taken aback, like humble servant um, is not a case of her going, look how humble I am. It's just like, I'm nothing. Why? Why has God chosen me? Why has God decided to use me in this way? And I think, I think she's kind of responding in awe to the fact that God has chosen to use her. And that's why she can say, sure, just a humble servant. And also a recognition that this is who I need to be. So how are you doing with humility? How are your church leaders doing with humility? Is there a conversation you need to have with them? Do you need to find different church leaders? If your church leaders are not showing humility, if they are not Jesus-like in the way they live and speak and act, I want to encourage you to, to think really carefully about that one.